how do we know the Oort cloud exists? Right, the Oort cloud, this this reservoir of comets, the source of long period comets, comets that have orbits longer than 200 years or so. How do we know it exists? Because we've never ever observed directly the Oort cloud. You know, we, we, we've seen asteroids in the asteroid belt. We've seen Kuiper belt objects in the Kuiper belt. We're, we may have some indication of some, a region called the scattered disk, but that's another episode. But beyond that, beyond in the most distant edges of our solar system, we think there is a, a, a thing called the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud, the origin of most comets. But we've never actually picked up a telescope looked deep into the sky, found a very distant object, said, yep, yep, see that object right there? Orbiting about 40,000 astronomical units away. Yep, that is a member of the Oort cloud. We don't. We don't. So how do we know it exists, even though we can't see it? Well, this is the game of science, right? Science is all about inference. It's about taking the available data, the available observations, what we do have, what we do have, all the data, and drawing conclusions from the data and developing hypotheses that can eventually be tested. And with the test, you make new observations or you come back through old data looking for extra connections so you can validate or invalidate hypotheses. And it, But it's at the end of the day, it's all inference. We have no direct images of objects in the Oort cloud. But we do have data. We do have observations of messengers from the Oort cloud. We have data. We have observations of when the Oort cloud, which we're pretty sure it exists, sends a messenger into the inner solar system. One of its own members detaches from the Oort cloud, plunges into the inner solar system. We can study that. We can study a comet. We can take pictures of a comet. We can trace the orbit of a comet. And from the behavior of those members, of those messengers, we can figure out the properties of their home, of their origin. And it was the middle of the 20th century when we first realized that these long period comets might have a common origin point because it didn't have to be true. Like every once in a while, every once in a while, there's a comet that appears in the sky, you know, or, you know, we can detect with telescopes with observations. And it's like, yeah, you know, okay, brand new comet. We, we look, we look in the historical records. We say, oh, this is a new one. This is a new comet that no one has ever seen before. And then it does its thing, you know, it like, you know, gets scattered out of the solar system or it hits the sun or it gets locked into a shorter orbit or whatever. And then we forget about it. And then, you know, a few years later, a few decades later, another comet, brand new comet appears. And, you know, for centuries, astronomers had been cataloging, cataloging these new comets. And the question is, like, where are these comets coming from? Really, just where are they coming from? What, what is their origin story for these comets? And in the middle of the 20th century, uh, a few astronomers, especially Jan Oort, figured this out or made some very, very persuasive arguments because he started looking at the statistics of, the, of these new comets, these brand new comets that had never been seen before, and, and asking some real questions about the observations. One thing he noticed was that these new comets come from all directions in the sky. Sometimes they're along the plane of the solar system, but a lot of times they come from up or down, you know, sideways. It doesn't matter. It, it didn't matter. They're, they're coming from all over. Okay, that's interesting. And he also noticed, or he argued, that comets don't live long. Comets don't live long because they either eventually crash into the sun or they encounter a giant planet and get kicked out of the solar system or they exhaust themselves as all their ices melt and evaporate and turn into comet tails. After a few passes, like a few dozen or a few hundred passes, there's not going to be any ice left. It'll just be inert. It'll be dead. It won't. You won't be able to see it anymore. So comets... Uh, come from any direction in the sky, 
And it's not the same comets every time. There are, it has to be new comets. There must be a reservoir of comets. There has to be a, a storage facility of comets that send new comets into the solar system every once in a while. And this was the first step. And then the big, big, big realization was by examining the orbits of these new comets. You can see, you know, the, you know, they, they come in, they're, they're tracing orbits as they get close to the sun, and then they circle around. And once you get enough data, you can reconstruct the entire orbit. You can rebuild that entire orbit. You can see, okay, this is the entire path. Like, we're just catching one little leg here, like the final turn before the finish line. But with that data, and we know math and gravity and everything, you can construct the whole thing. And when you construct the whole thing, these new comets have very elliptical orbits, and they have an aphelion, this is the farthest distance from the sun, they had a relatively common aphelion. So no matter where these comets were coming from, they started, on average, about 20,000 AU away, astronomical units away. That's 20,000 times further from the sun than the Earth is. So whatever's causing long period comets must be a reservoir. It must have a lot more comets than we're seeing and only occasionally send in new ones because comets don't last long once they encounter the inner solar system. So every time it's a new comet, it really is a new comet. This reservoir must be evenly distributed all around the solar system and it must be at around 20,000 astronomical units away, you know, plus or minus. It's a cloud of comets in the outermost regions of the solar system, the Oort cloud. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and go to patreon.com slash to help me make this stuff happen. And I will see you next time.